folks, Artie here. Well, I'm building a new layout, and um, I've been thinking of which point motors to use. Ones I used in the past were the Pico twin coils. Um, they were great, um, pretty reliable, but I only had one problem with them. When I, um, when you throw them, I didn't always throw. And nothing worse when you had them in a spot where it was a hard to get place. And, um, I was looking at the point motors we have down the club, which are the tortoise motors. A bit more reliable, if you set them up right. And, um... They don't normally fail. Very rarely do they fail. And so that way, operationally, it's good. You won't get a derailment, or derailment's limited. Unless you haven't thrown a point, or you throw the point underneath the train, and then you've got all sorts of derailments. So anyway, I looked on YouTube. And there's been plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to install them. And how to wire them. And um, the bit that got me very interested was how you guys are doing the soldering on the tortoise motors. I'm thinking, why? You guys are doing it the hard way. It's got to be easier way. So I was thinking and thinking and looking through more tutorials and then I saw a friend of mine um, the way he did his and I thought no 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 we got to come up with a better idea this don't work well it does but yeah, some of us <laughs> can't just bend like a snake yeah, I'll show you what I mean and uh so now all I got to do is separate these wires out and then um, I've got to take one, just one of these wires and I'll put one here and then I'll put the other one here and according to Tortoise's little diagram here, I can either use pin 4 or pin 5. So those little wires are going to get soldered to pin 4 or pin 5. Uh, let me determine which ones I can get to, and uh, I'll get that done, and I'll get back to you. All right, so I got that negative feed. We're over here. Uh, I've got these soldered up. These two were such a pain in the butt to get to. Um, you can't see them very well. That one you, you can't almost get to at all. Uh, and in order to solder the rest of those, I literally had to clean off the deck and lay down to get under there with a soldering iron. And I actually broke the leg of my other uh, panel in the process. So now I've got that gluing back up. Uh, funny thing, in order to get soldered up there the wire up there I actually had to use my mirror so I could see uh, the tortoise in the mirror so I knew which pin that I was soldering to sorry buddy but Somehow we've got to come up with a better way of doing things. And of course with us Aussies down here, we get used to <laughs> working upside down since we live on a land down under. Okay, um, I'll show you guys the idea I came up with um, after looking at the options that we have, and I had in particular. Um, we all know about this COVID thing that came in and certain things and items are becoming very hard to get a hand on. But I've discovered something 
that is available, cheap, and reasonably easy to install. And for myself, I end up creating a simple standard and how do I'm going to wire up the rest of the layout once I expand. And I can keep to this standard and maybe you guys can adopt the same practice. Let's see how we go. All right, let's get to it. Okay. Here we go, the tortoise motor. Um, after waiting nearly four months before it arrived from the US, I uh, got myself some tortoise motors. I was lucky to get these ones off eBay. Um, and I've actually noticed there's actually a difference between the old stock and the new stock. Um, which I will show you shortly. Here you go. There's a difference between the two. The one on my left, they're the old ones. Um, as you can see, there's no numbers on the bottom and the soldering ho holes all are not in line. This is the new batch. As you can see, it's marked for one to eight. The pins and the holes are all reasonably in line but you can actually see the markings which way goes where which is a brilliant idea it makes the job easier okay the thought that I had I was trying to use the idea we have down in the club at my local club where you run tortoise motors and with them they have the blue plug that slips straight on and gives you contacts to the tortoise motors uh, with the little tiny little soldering pads on the bottom after doing a bit of shopping around in my local hobby shops no one had stock in it stock of them then I went around to the local electronic shops nothing anyway the first ones I got were the new batch which is this one here so I took this tortoise motor down to JK Electronics and looked at the plugs that they had. And I found these. A brilliant idea. And what made it better, the alignment was easy and they'll fit straight in the holes without any modification to the new one. What makes it even better using this, it's got an actual clip. As you can see there. Once it's joined up, it will not come out. Like uh, what we had down the club with the blue ones, they do tend to slip out once and, once every now and then. And um, lose contact, and we're wondering why the point motors don't work. Okay, so they come in a packet. I don't have a loose one here, but it gives you an idea. They come up, come up with like the males come up like this, uh, with the little soldering tabs on the bottom. Well, I haven't got a spare one. Of the full eight um, I do have a three pin version of this this is what they look like these are the solder they ca these plugs come in various number of pins the most I think it is nine or ten pin and they range down to two the brilliant idea, as, a, as you can see, they actually got indentation there where the female plug actually clips in and stays there and it doesn't slip out. This is a great idea. The female comes in the packet like this. You've got um, your little tabs like this. With most primping, to, what I do is, I'll show you shortly, is 
I solder the wire to it, then crimp it, then I crimp them, and all it does is, um, you know, just trying to find one here, here's an empty plug here, which I'll use shortly, and what happens is these, oops, I really didn't focus, these, slip in in a particular way in in the holes I won't put that in because I'm not ready yet but they slip in and they clip and they don't slide out because as you can just see that little clip on the end there that slots that slots into See these little holes in here, they slip into there, and they don't come, come out. And if you do make a mistake, all you need to do is get a little pair of tweezers, and you can actually push that little clip tab uh, down, and you can gently just push them out and pull the wire back out. Okay. With the old, before I forget, what I had to do with the older tortoise motor, here's an older one that I've done here. Now what I had to do to solder these on in this way to reduce the space um, is I've actually lined up that pin in, hang on. And I, basically what I've done was I just went to the highest point, like so. Mark where the holes are going to be. And I drilled it out, I think it was 1.2 millimetres. Drill. Just slowly and gently. And um, then this end up slipping in through the new holes and soldered them on now if you don't feel like drilling the holes and want a quicker alternative to put those um, to put that clip on you can just solder it on like this quick and easy Still on the firm and secure. Uh, what I tend to do, you see this black mark, what that is pin one. So you can get you, give yourself a reference like that's pin one, you got the one wire going, that's your first spot. Other good thing about this plug, you can pre do a harness, which I'll show later. Um, you can also mark them, identify them. So what you can do is you can put your pallet motor in the place, make up your harness, and hook them up to the appropriate number. Whereas this one is the point switch 11, which will be installed in coming weeks, hopefully. Now, as I mentioned, I can I'll create myself a standard, a wiring standard. Like most people that worked on cars and putting plugs, you notice there's a wiring standard with the colours. Now, what I've done is I drew up a wiring plan with colours. As you can see, I've got orange for the one, one pin, black for two, red for three, and four for blue. Now, I've been working on one set of points, the first time I worked with live points. So, these white, the red and the black will be basically put into my um, buzz wire since I'm running DCC. Then I've got the white, which would be like an earth, brown and green. That's for my signaling and whatever. And there's your grey for your other uh, point motor. 
Now, I did with my experimentation earlier, I hooking it up to the um, Switch 8, um, trying to sort out the parallels for the open and close position. Uh, I just made a little bit of a mark on which one is to go where. But this is pretty much my standard now, is these are the colours. Because a cable that I've got, with COVID we've been having issues with getting a lot of stuff and shopping around. But at Jayco I found this uh, 9 core wire. And now you're thinking, well you've got an 8 pin plug, why do you need, why did you get a 9 core wire? Well, it's reasonably simple. Um, these eight wires will go be soldered onto the block, onto the pads. My yellow wire um, is there as, you can use it as a spare, or in my case, uh, that will be actually hooked into the uh, DB, D, DB20 track detector. So it's there, ready to go. It'd be the same at the other end where the yellow one is loose and that'd be for future wiring. Once the DB, DB20 has become available in Australia, we can get your hands onto them. Okay. Now I'll show you the next step. Okay. Now just a quick tip when you're soldering a wire onto these little terminal clips. When you put the wire on and solder it, didn't try not to go past oh, it's moved on me, it's hard to hold the camera and put it at the same time. Try not to solder past this point here. Because what will happen is one you will block the clip the clip there and with the pin when it slides up it will jam the plug the plug won't slip in properly so try not to get the get the solder past this point here i'm going to swap cameras now and i'll show you how i'm going to do it okay folks um i realized um when i was making that clip and when i had a look at it um, the focus actually, or well, the view was actually for crimping these slugs, <laughs> um, was out of view. So, um, what I'm going to do here for now is just show you what I've used. Now, for those who haven't got the crimping tool for this, you can use one of these Y stripper cutters. And along this section here, you got the non-insulated one on this one. The crimping section is up in here. However, 1.5 mil is still too big for this these connectors. Um, what you could do is use the long nose pliers and fold these ends over squeeze them gently and come along with this tool in the middle and squeeze but you got two shot you got to take two bites one over where the solder is and the second one where the insulation is at the end now i do have one crimping tool and you've got different sizes the smallest one here is just under uh, one mil and this one here the next jaw is just slightly too big but you still end up getting a nice finish it takes the whole whole, whole uh, plug in its jaw and you squeeze gently or hard as you can and at the end you want to be careful of 
These bits said don't come up too wide because then it won't fit in the plug. I'll get the long nose pliers or a pair of pliers, just squeeze it in gently and again squeeze down. Okay, there is a good crimping tool that's got other um, sizes and replaceable jaws up here on Amazon, which I have seen. Um, I am bu not buying anything from Amazon at the moment from overseas because it just takes too long to get here. Right, now, putting these plugs in its place. Now, I've, I didn't mention uh, before that these plugs have a one way of going on to fit. As you can see, there is a bit of a bit of a lock, a little lock tab here, a bit of a bevel, and if you see on the male plug, you've got a bit of a groove in there. So what happens is, you take that when it when you push it into its place, it locks in. And the wire won't slip out. It's a bit loose now because I haven't got the joiners in. But it won't fall out. Okay. So to release it, just simply lift it. comes out. Simple as that. Even on these ones. It fits on all of them. Simple as. Now... From J-Car, these bits here are about a dollar twenty-five, I believe, um, for one of these margins, and these ones are roughly about dollar sixty, dollar eighty. But it's a lot cheaper, and they're uh, rarely available. Okay, now as I mentioned. Oh, before I go further, another thing to do when you go to put the wiring in this plug, it's handy to note to mark yourself the number one spot. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, as I said, I'm going to a standard, I'll create my own wiring standard with the colours. Going from one to eight. So what I've done is I marked the number one spot on here on the male that's on the tortoise, and the number one plug that's on the female. Okay, now I'm going to go by the wiring diagram. My um wiring plan I'll take my orange wire like so now these have only got one way to go in to work as you can see on the plug you've got small ends then you've got the big end on the big end here this is where the wires get fed through you turn around the other side you'll see these little grooves, little holes in here. What you need to do is, when you put it in, have this bottom lip go to the side where you haven't got the hole on top. The hole on top that you see is for this little tiny clip here. So this wire will lock into place and you won't pull out or push out. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. I'll put the number one pin in. It's easier as just sliding it in slowly. And you push it. If it doesn't, just gently get a pair of pliers, thin long nose pliers, or even tweezers. And then you just push it in gently until you feel or hear that little click. Then it's in place. Now, if I have a pull, if I tug on it, it won't come out. Simple as that. Now, my next wire will be black. Now, for me, black represents um, the black wire on my bus. 
on my DCC. Same again. Feed it through. Feed it through. Push it in gently and wait for it to click. Now that's in place, give it a little tug, it doesn't come out. Okay, now I've got red. This is my red to my buzz. Now as I mentioned, I don't, I'm, I've got a electric flog. For the electric flog, I'm going to use blue now blue will go there's a blue wire that's on my frog that's been soldered on to it so as a tortoise switch works this flicks over the power will be actually going through this blue wire onto the tortoise so i'll i'll put that in push it in I do find that it is a little bit tight to push it in its spot, but just a slight little persuasion with the pliers and it slips into place. Okay, then I've got white. Sometimes these won't go into place properly. And you, you, what happens is it bends out of, out of whack. It bends a little bit. So you just bends down. If it bends down, there's like a little lip in there where the lug's got to slide into. And if it's out of whack, it's not going to slide in. You might need to sway it a little bit. There you go. White's in. Push them in till it's clicked. Then my next wire is going to be brown. And lucky last, I've got grey. So my grey goes on the end. Again, just slightly. Easily pushing in. There you go. Done. As you can see, none of the wire pulls out. And remember, when you're making your harness, number your plug number. Okay. With this cord as well, what a handy tip to a handy tip to remember. I like this cable because I can actually mark what point motor this cable goes into. So when I'm tracing the wire and feeding it through under my layout, I know where it goes. Now, other thing is, which you can see, you have one standard plug and it fits on any point motor. You don't have to mess about re-soldering them in case your port motor fails. You can just easily just slip out the plug. Here's another one. Push it in. You can put that in. Clicks in a place. Won't come out. 
until you lift up the locking tab and pull it. Another good practice to do, which I won't do at this stage, well actually I might, um, get a bit of insulation tape, and wrap these wires up as such. Just give it that bit of extra protection so it doesn't get caught underneath the layout. There's one harness made up. Now you're all going to wonder and ask them a question, why have I got this little length made up? Well, someone failed to do the practice of measure, measuring twice and cut once. I measured once and cut once and one of the plugs that I've went to install underneath my layout is just a little bit too short. So made myself an extension cord using the same plug you can follow the same practice it makes it so much easier yeah it takes a bit of time but once you take your time and um, work on a plan it'll be more enjoyable you have less electrical problems and if you do have an electrical problem it'd be easy to fix now, another, another, another tip to give you on, the, on these plugs is in case you've put your wires in a long location or you need to swap them around, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to fight and taunt and try to rip these plugs out. There's a trick to them. Okay, I'll chuck the tantrum with this one slightly. Um, when I was doing one of my harnesses, I want to say tantrum, I just messed it all up, so the easiest way was to cut it. But I'll demonstrate on this how easy it is to pull those lugs out. Now, as you see, we've got those little gaps in here. You've got a little clip here, on the right on the edge. Get a fine tip um, tweezers and then what you want to do is just near the end of it you push down. You push down on it and then you try to push it, push that plug back up, back out the way it came. On the end here you just again just give it a bit of persuasion, there it is come out that's no good because I can't salvage it because it's all been um, crimped so I'll just throw them away I'll show you again it's as simple as this just push down and go and it just slides out handy little tip for when you when you realize that you've Put the wire in the long, wrong hole. And yes, it does happen. Even I've done it many times. I've got a few of these now under my layout. Um, I'll go and show you now, under my layout, by plugging this to the section I was short on, and see how quick and easy it is to do. Okay. Okay, folks, here we are underneath my layout. Now, as you can see, I've already have a putting motor in place. I will send you a link to um, Rick's Bailey's YouTube site. He's got an excellent tu tutorials and tutorial on how to install these tallest point motors under the layout. Now, there's my male plug. Come along with my female plug and it just a few squares clips in. All done. Simple as that. I don't have to worry about fighting 
uh, with mirrors and screw and soldering eyes trying to put it on the pad. Now, oops, sorry about this. Now I'll hook it up to. Sorry about this. Hang on. Squeeze that together with my two fingers. Nice and snug. And all done. That will all tuck away its side. Um, as you can see, as you can see under here, I've got them on all my tortoise motors, the plugs. This one has failed already, it's new. Um, I have something has gone funny on it, so for me to take it out, all I've got to do is pull the plug out, undo the four screws, and it slides out. Now the wiring all goes in on my layout is all going into one section, which is here, and then it gets fed in to my circuit board. Now my wiring that comes out through to here, as you can see I've got a switch aid here and a mini panel. Um, again, I'll add you, you can have a look on Rick's Bailey site on how to program the switch 8 and he's got an excellent tutorial on how to program and set the mini panel up. I still got another couple of point decoders to go here, which I'm still waiting for them to arrive from the US. Uh, they're doing a Kentucky tour, doing an American tour before it actually comes across. Now, what would happen with this board here? I've got it mounted as such, only as a temporary as a temporary fixture to make it easier for me to work on the electronic components then once I've finished I'll end up putting a couple of hinges and you'll fold up underneath the layout something I will show you and share with you guys at a later date so folks I hope um, my little tip my little idea helped you out a bit um, it's great to share each other's ideas. That's a whole idea. That's a whole thing about this YouTube. It's great. Um, I found a lot of good handy tips from other other um, broadcasters. And um, yeah, I'll sign off. And all you guys have fun and stay safe. Bye.